Hi, I'm Steve Kahn from The Rep, and we're here at the Toronto International Film Festival for The Rep's virtual Toronto studio. I'm very pleased to welcome two of the stars of Belfast, Jamie Dornan and Katrina Balf. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, so I guess essentially the film is based on memories of the, of Kenneth Branagh's childhood and, and essentially the two of you were playing his parents, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially that's what it was. <laughs> um, yeah, he said, uh, I think his, um, his, his, his uh, siblings were quite pleased at the casting, particularly of Katrina because um, you know, <laughs> probably less so with me, but um, yeah, we're certainly it's a it's a a, a, a sort of um, I guess like a lot of the movie, it's like based on on real events, you know. And we're playing like a version of his parents, and it's all slightly ambiguous, but um, yeah, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, what what appealed to you? What made you want to be a part of this, Katrina? Oh God. Um, well, I mean, the script was just so beautiful. Um, you know, I think the first time I read it, you know, it was the first time I had read something about the North of Ireland as well that wasn't about the ideology. It was about the people and it was about, you know, this love of family and love of community. And, you know, the first time I read it, I totally teared up many, many times. Um, and obviously, you know, there was working with the incredible people who had already signed on, you know, Jamie, Judy and Kenneth, obviously. Um, but Ken, yeah, he, he just, it was such a beautiful love story to his childhood and to the place where he grew up and it just was so special on the page. So that was primarily the reason. Right. Jamie, what, what made you want to be a part of it? Um, all of the reasons that Katrina just laid out there and, you know, it, it, it this came to us during the first lockdown where we were all in a state of disarray and wondering whether movies would ever even be a thing again to <laughs> survive. You know, everyone's just questioning the way the world was going. And also it was a very reflective time, I think. And, you know, everyone was sort of trying to figure out, you know, how to spend their time, what, 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 what everything meant to them. And I was thinking about home a lot. I was writing a script that was set at home. Um, I was away from home. I couldn't get home. When I say home, I mean to, to the north of Ireland, to Belfast. And I had family there that I, I hadn't seen. I wasn't able to see. So home was very much on my mind. And then I get a script called Belfast being, you know, written and directed by Sir Kenneth Branagh. So it was like, uh, I felt like it was just this perfect sort of timely package, you know, of, you know, um, with already, um, yeah, Katrina wasn't, on there just yet but um judy judy well i mean ken brown and judy dance is enough <laughs> like you don't need any more you know uh attractions that, than that really and then it just got better from there with you know katrina and, and kieran and you know it was just this great group of people to tell a story you know probably only once in, i imagine only once in my career will i do a movie called the the, the time that i that made me so um yeah it was an easy yes Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I would think that for both of you, you're sort of at the stage in your career where you're kind of past being intimidated. But when you look behind the camera and there's Sir Kenneth Branagh, and then you look to the side and there's Dame Judi Dench. I mean, that's some some heavy hitters there around you. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> I, I was still intimidated the entire time. Um, <laughs> But, but Ken did this beautiful thing. I think it was like our first day. We all got together. Um, it was Jamie, myself, Judy and Kieran with Ken in a room. And he, we all just talked about our families and our childhoods and growing up. And it was such a wonderful introduction to just get everybody to relax and get to know each other, but also bring, you know, it, although this film is about Ken's childhood, it sort of brought all of our personal experiences into it and you know we got to know each other on such a you know personal level very quickly because of the shared um anecdotes and stories and and it was a really I mean you know that's why Ken is as brilliant as he is is because he knows how to do things like that that just kind of bring everyone together really quickly 
-hmm. Yeah, it felt, it didn't, it just, it just did feel like such a comfortable set and such a comfortable mm -hmm. environment. And we were made to feel that um, as much as, you know, we're like, <laughs> like this under the water flapping away, like, uh, we, you know, I think we, we were made to feel that, you know, we were the right people to be there and the right people to be telling that story. And for, for a story so personal to Ken, that was a real, like, blessing to us, you know, and that real vote of confidence, you know, that he, 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 that he had in us to, to tell this story that was so personal to him. But, you know, also in the time that it was, like, we shot this in the summer, uh, right in the height of COVID, and we were all basically in this, like, sort of, we bubbled together and, uh, it felt like this very magical, I mean, the sun was shining every day, you know, it really was. And it just, it was just very good vibes and a very relaxed set and joyful and lots of laughs and lots of chats. And it was just a very fun working environment, which I think often yields the best work. Mm -hmm. Right. Does it change how you prepare for, for a role when it is something, you know, based on, on your director's childhood? <laughs> um, uh, what do you think, Trina? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, it was, it all happened very quickly as well. So um, I don't know. I mean, I think you, as Ken said, you know, this is the sort of the script version of his parents, you know, and I think he didn't want to try and do an exact, um, you know, I think he wanted to sort of have these, he, you know, he very much gave them over to us and was like, you create this and we want you to bring what you feel from the page into your characters. So I think luckily he wasn't stopping us at any point and saying, no, actually my mom didn't do that or my dad didn't do that, you know, do it this way. Um, so he gave us a lot of freedom and, and within that, I think that pressure just goes, you sort of are allowed to to just play and and he was very encouraging of that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so so there was room to to add things or to to shade the character in a different in a different way for both of you. Yeah, a wee bit. I think you know Ken is very open like that. You know, um, I feel that there's times where I, it wasn't like some big sort of improvised event the whole thing but there was moments where we were able to improvise some stuff and um uh a lot, particularly stuff where there's lots of different characters you know at the sort of the street party or um when people are around at around a house for a bit of a send-off when i'm going away again and you know there's definitely ad libs here and there and, and you know <clears throat> again ken sort of trusted us because, you know, we're, Katrina and I are both, well, me particularly, but we're both from that sort of end of the island, you know, um, and uh, some of the colloquialisms and stuff are, are you know, sit very strongly within us. So um, there's sometimes a bit of, you know, with Ken, a bit of like, would you want to say something here if, if in response to that? And then we'd suggest something that, and, and if he liked it, he would know immediately if he liked it. And then you felt free to use that or play within whatever that um, suggestion was, you know. So, again, just a great thing of freeing you up and feeling that you're that you're you're capable and you're the right person to be there, you know, and having been able to sprinkle a little bit of you, your own um, sort of uh, seasoning to what it is that's already on the page. Actors love that, you know. Um, if, if we're if we're felt that it, what if we're felt that if we're given the idea that what we're doing is right and it's adding to it, then it's a really freeing thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Katrina, did you have to adjust your your Dublin accent to uh, to Northern Ireland? I don't have a Dublin accent. I, well, I don't know what accents I have actually. Wow. But um, no, I grew up. Uh, I grew up on the border. But yeah, I mean, oh. the Belfast accent's much stronger. But um, I grew up sort of listening to it a lot on TV and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's a fun one. It's a really fun one to do. But yeah, it was, you know, I think none of us who grew up in Ireland during the 80s and, and that um, sort of were unaffected by that time. And, you know, my family, we, uh, although I was born in Dublin, we moved to Monaghan when I was 
six weeks old because my dad was a guard and was stationed at the border. So the troubles have sort of, you know, affected my family's life in a way, even though I didn't live in Belfast. But, you know, just doing all the research and watching all of the footage from that time and sort of the inception of of when this all started. I mean, it was it was a very emotional, I think, thing doing all this research. I mean, it, it definitely felt, you know, I, I think it, it, because it feels so personal and because you live through a lot of the, the things that went on, you know, later on that were because of this catalyst, because of this time. So um, it was, it was, yeah, it was great doing all that research and watching all that footage and for the accent, but also just, just the feel of that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Jamie, how how familiar were you with, you know, with the late sixties in in Belfast and with the troubles at, at that point? Well, you know, you're if you grew up there, you're informed of if you grew up in the middle. Of, you know, I was born in nineteen eighty two. You know, um, sort of, you know, right in the middle of a thirty year conflict. Um, and it went on until, I mean, in some respects, it's, it's still going on to, to a certain point in, in a lesser way. But, you know, from the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, I was 16 when that was signed and relative peace was brought. So um, when you are growing up in that environment, um, you, you're, you're, you're taught about it. You know, you're taught about why, why is everyone fighting around you? What is this hatred based on? Well, where did this begin? So, um I personally don't think it's taught enough. It, it's sort of dependent on, on what school you went to and um, uh, often the religion of that school or if that school does have a denomination that it's funneled to you in a slightly different terms to maybe the school down the street, you know. So, um, but um, yeah, I was, you know, I've, I've aware of probably more my adult life looking back on it even more and, and looking back at the origins of why the conflict started and, um, you know, the, that was very much, you know, I mean, it, 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 you argue it started back, uh, you know, a hundred years ago um, with the partition. And, but uh, definitely that time that this film um, focuses on 1969 and the, and the civil rights um, marches in Derry and when it all kicked off and then that fed into Belfast. It's unimaginable, really, you know, and I think it's captured really well in the, in the movie, that idea of like, stepping out the door as a, as a young child and your sanctuary and your safe haven being the street and the community and the people that you live with suddenly overnight just becomes chaotic and terrifying and and you're fearful of the same people that you were you know friends with the day before you know so um i think ken's captured that beautifully what that that feeling must have been like you know and um you know we i grew up in a conflict society and now my family live in a post-conflict society back there and it's um, it's it's very unique, you know. It it it, it has an effect on you in in a, in a big way. And uh, what I think is remarkable about the people from the north of Ireland is the resilience and the humor uh, that humor that we have that you need, I think, to get through um, some of the things that we've all had to to live through. Um, and again, I think that's something that Ken captures really beautifully in in the film, the humor. Yeah. Yeah. Humor and music, you get to sing Everlasting Love in this mm -hmm. song, right? Uh, yeah, that, that was a terrifying <laughs> experience on set. Um, one of many. Um, you know, I'm just sort of watching it going like, how much can you tell that I'm thinking about dance moves? Um, <laughs> <laughs> where my feet are going. But um, yeah, that was that, that was a bit of a trip and a nice moment of sort of escapism in in, in the in the film that comes at a sort of tiny time. You know, I think the best takeaway uh, from that, you know, in the movie, like it's my voice overdubbed with um, love affair. You know, so it's not luckily it's solely not on my voice carrying it that, that we're both in there, which is necessary. But um, I think the big takeaway from that day was. Remember at the end, Katrina, like we, um, they just, they were on Jude, Jude Hill, our lead space. He's just angelic little face he has. And we, I think the angles, it, it, we, a, a true eyeline to Katrina and I dancing wasn't kind of working by that stage because of where they moved the camera. So 
he was just looking at something else and and uh katrina and i were just watching the monitors and ken was just feeding stuff to jude about like and now uh your your dad's picked your mother up and he's kissing her and you've never you've never seen them do this you've never you've never experienced this kind of love from them it's joyous and stuff. I was watching his face react to everything ken was saying and we were like heartbroken it was just so beautiful you know it's so amazing everything that we boy does just works on camera you know it's a joy to watch it mm -hmm. right so katrina did you did you have any um you know s scary moments of your own on set were there particularly <laughs> particularly uh there was a few um <laughs> Luckily, not all of them made it in, so um, <laughs> <laughs> which might say something about the quality of them. But um, no, I think it was funny. Like one of our first days, it was you know we were going for rehearsals, and then they were like, "And you're meeting Jamie to to have a dance rehearsal." And the two of us showed up, and we were like, "Why are we having a dance rehearsal?" Um, and Jamie claims he has two left feet, but uh, every time we actually had to do it, he had, he was perfect, and I was messing up um no but it was just like as jamie said it 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 honestly the entire time it felt like this i don't know magical little bubble that we had you know even the crew i think are people ken works with over and over again and you know he just builds this really loyal loving group of people around him and that's because he is that way to them and um the whole thing just felt so fun and joyous. I mean, I know there's parts where it's heavy and stuff like that, but filming it and making it was just such a, it was just such a great experience. And hanging out with the boys, you know, Jude and Lewis are the best kids. They're just the loveliest, loveliest kids. And we tortured them the entire time. Um, <laughs> and we just had so much fun. And uh, it's just so great to see, yeah, to see that it's, it's shown on, on screen. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, did you ever feel restricted by the fact that you were filming in during COVID? Were there things you wish you could have done that you couldn't? Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's very, you know, Katrina and I have never had dinner together, which is a very yeah. strange, <laughs> strange thing when you're working so closely with someone and we get on like a house on fire and it's such a strange thing to like not have cemented that sort of relationship with like, three dinners a week or whatever you're usually doing with with uh, with co-stars when you're filming um that part of it was odd but that was just the the way we find ourselves you know we that was the way it was you know um so we're constantly telling each other that we need to finally meet up now that we're <laughs> a <these> year <laughs> later <laughs> yeah, exactly but it is but I, it, but I don't in a weird way i don't think that it certainly didn't hamper any of the experience you know we we were all so tight you know and felt so close and felt like a family whilst we were doing this movie which is which is incredible considering the restrictions in place and we were all having to you know get, we got every single crew member in cask tested every day um and we were all wearing masks in between takes and you know offset so it was kind of um it, it should have been alienating, but actually in a way it was really bonding to, I think we all felt that we were so lucky to be actually shooting something, given the opportunity to shoot something and not just anything, shoot this this really personal, beautiful story together with like these sort of legends of the game. You know, it would. I think there was a palpable sense of like, this is so cool that we're getting to do this in this time, you know, with these people. So, um, it didn't. It didn't break the bond at all. But you know, um, I definitely. Um, I, we definitely owe each other a dinner. Right. For sure. Well, well. Um, congratulations on on the film, and thanks so much for for talking about it. And and uh, I hope you get your dinner together real soon. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks,